Her family taught her to swallow life with large gulps and love every minute of it. When she was 17, though, a diving accident put her in the hospital, paralyzed from the neck down. Then her family's love of life helped her hang on when she wanted to die instead. Now she's affecting all of our lives. Her name is Johnny Erickson Tata. On the right-hand side on my cupboard door was a little plaque, and it was a silhouette of this little girl in a boat in the dark uh, out on the ocean with stars above her. And oh, I hope I get this poem right. It, it went, um, oh Lord, my little boat and I are on your open sea. Please guide us safely through the waves, my little boat and me. And in the dark, I'd see that. And, and there are times, even when I feel like waves of trials hit me broadside, and I feel like I'm in the dark, and you can barely see a ray of light around you, I still think of that little poem. Please guide me safely through the waves, my little boat and me. I'm still a little girl on the inside. Now over 40, that little girl is Johnny Erickson Tata. Paralyzed from the neck down in a diving accident at the age of 17, Johnny has sailed across some pretty rough water on that little boat of hers. Following her injury in 1967, Johnny was hospitalized flat on her back for two years. Those were lonely, despairing days, days of anguish full of tears, of painstaking questions. But through it all, Johnny remembers it was the loving support of her parents that gave her the courage and strength to accept her disability. You know, this is, I'm gonna have to say this without crying. My mom used to, uh, well, see, I don't think I can do this. My mother used to stand by my hospital bed at the guardrail, and she would hold books so I could read them. And for three hours, she would stand there, just slowly turning the pages so I could read. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that now, looking back, it breaks my heart so to see my mother love me that much and care that intimately. Back then, hey, mom, hold still. Can, well, I didn't read that page, mom. Straighten up just a little bit. What a selfish teenager I was and how self-absorbed and self-centered. But I still, to this day, cannot tell that story without thinking of what a wonderful parent, what a wonderful mother and father. Johnny's mom and dad made it their job to instill a kind of passion and wonder for life in their children. There was much more to God than Sunday school. Johnny and her sisters learned about life from their parents, that every part of life was sacred, and that God was real. They told us marvelous stories of sea adventures and scaling the Rockies and meeting Chief Own Different Horses. My father met a man called Chief Own Different Horses. And he tells about Noah and David and Moses and Daniel and Abraham. And, and these were all figures larger than life, but real, real people. And, and, and it was all a mixed, marvelous muddle of adventure and and excitement and enthusiasm and passion and wonder. And I don't know, it was just this is life and, and this, is, this is sacred and this is spiritual and this is history and this is, this is a part of who you are. And Christ is at the center of it all. And he makes it all gel and fit together. And, he, and, 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 and I, just, I just learned that life was, uh, was a gift from God and a gift given to me through my mom and dad. That's not the only gift Johnny got from her parents. Recognized for her remarkable work as an artist, Johnny traces her early interest in art back to her father. But as Johnny explains, what he taught her had a lot more to do with God's love and compassion than just painting pictures. And when I was a little girl, oh, I would just sit by his side as he would paint, and I'd have out my crayons and my coloring book. But then came the day when he leaned down, put me up on his knee, a privileged place to be, and he, and, he, and he encased his big hand around mine, and together we pick up his best brush and dabble in the oils and then sweep them across his canvas. And I couldn't believe it. I mean, I was actually painting a 
a beautiful painting, and I was doing it. Although it wasn't me, it was Daddy. But, but it's me, I'm holding onto the brush. But, but he's guiding me. But it's my painting, but it's really his. <laughs> and that's very much the way we live in Christ, isn't it? We're doing this, but yet we're not really. It's the Lord through us, but it's this gift that we have a chance to create but yet it's his energy and his inspiration and his composition and his wisdom. And it, it's, it's like this marvelous union that happened between myself as a little girl and my father that taught me how to paint. And it's that same marvelous union between ourselves and our father in heaven that teaches us how to live. <laughs>